point pattern analysis studies the spatial arrangement of points in a geographical space. It has applications in a wide range of areas including wildlife ecology, biology, epidemiology, natural resource management, and criminology. Spatial processes are closely related to observed point patterns. Therefore, this presentation explains the fundamentals of spatial processes and illustrates in various examples how different types of spatial processes can lead to distinct point patterns. Spatial point patterns can be analyzed through descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics use visual or numerical methods to shed some light on the structure of the spatial pattern. This includes, for example, the mean center of a point pattern, which is represented as a point location in a given study region. Another example is the mean nearest neighbor distance. The nearest neighbor distance for a point is the distance from that point to the closest other point. In the left figure, yellow arrows indicate for each point the distance to its nearest neighbor. Taking the average over all these distances gives them the mean nearest neighbor distance. As opposed to descriptive statistics, in inferential statistics, the analysis is stated as a hypothesis. We ask whether or not a particular set of observations was generated by a hypothesized spatial process. The null hypothesis is therefore that the pattern we are observing has been produced by a particular spatial process. This map shows observed locations of the invasive termite Coptotermes formusanus in southeast Florida. We can, for example, hypothesize that the points are randomly distributed, or in other words, that they are the result of a spatial process that creates a random point pattern. The observations look clustered, but it is unknown if the clustering is due to chance unless a statistical test is conducted. This example shows that observed point patterns provide clues to a possible causal spatial process. A spatial process is a description of how a spatial pattern might have been generated. A distinction can be made between deterministic and stochastic processes. If a spatial process leads to the same outcome each time it is executed, this spatial process is called deterministic. In such a case, the process description can typically be formulated through a mathematical equation. For example, in a plane with a perpendicular x and y axis, the equation z equals 2x plus 3y describes a spatial process that produces a numerical value for z at every location in the xy plane. The value of z is shown for selected locations in the figure. The contours in the figure show that the surface Z is a simple inclined plane rising from southwest to northeast across the mapped area. Such a spatial process always produces the same outcome at each location. The figure shows the only possible realization of the process because the process is deterministic. However, geographic data are rarely deterministic in this way. More often, geographic data appear to be the result of a stochastic or random process, whose outcome is somewhat indetermined and cannot be given precisely by a mathematical function. Due to a random or stochastic element, the result of such a process may generate different results each time it is generated, and it becomes unpredictable. Examples of stochastic processes are wildfires, floods, or disease spread. As an example, we can define a slightly modified version of the process from before and compute z as 2x plus 3y plus d, where d is a randomly chosen value at each location, such as plus or minus 1. Two realizations of this process are shown in the left and right figure. As the ISO lines indicate, there is still a general rise from southwest to northeast. However, the resultant surface is not a simple plane anymore, but more complex with the direction of the steepest slope slightly deviating from the general direction at different locations. 
This can also be noticed by the contour lines no longer being straight lines. Furthermore, the two realizations in both images reveal some differences in the pattern of isolines, which is due to the random elements involved in this spatial process. A stochastic process which is independent of the location is called an independent random process. Such a process is also said to be stationary. Stationary means that the chances of an event occurring are equal on any location. The underlying concept of an independent random process is often referred to as complete spatial randomness. Formally, complete spatial randomness postulates two conditions. The first one is the condition of equal probability. It states that any located point called an event in the language of statistics has an equal probability of being in any position. The second condition is that of independency. It states that the positioning of any event is independent of the positioning of any other event. The outcome of complete spatial randomness can be illustrated by randomly placing points on a map. Let us assume that the x and y coordinate of a point can take any value between 0 and 1. To obtain complete spatial randomness, we randomly sample a number between 0 and 1 from a uniform probability distribution for both the x and the y coordinate. This means that any coordinate value between 0 and 1 is equally probable. Using the found x and y coordinates, we mark the event on the map. This procedure could then be repeated 100 times for a total of 100 points. These maps show two realizations of the described process. Due to the random nature of the process, each map will look different. One can also characterize the long-run expected outcome for this process mathematically. For such a description, the study area is first divided into equal-sized and non-overlapping areas called quadrats. As an example, the figure on the left uses square quadrats to show the location of events. The middle figure depicts the number of events in each quadrat found on the left. The right figure uses hexagonal quadrats to show the location of events. The long-run expected results for complete spatial randomness can be expressed as an expected frequency distribution of events in these quadrats. This means that it is theoretically known what proportion of cells should have zero events, what proportion of cells should have one event, and so on. More specifically, the approximate proportion of cells with k events under complete spatial randomness can be obtained by the Poisson distribution, which is shown in this equation. The Greek letter lambda denotes the average rate of events per quadrat in the study area, which is simply the total number of events divided by the number of quadrats. Since the predicted outcome of a quadrat count description of a pattern that is generated by complete spatial randomness can be obtained by the Poisson distribution, a spatial process that follows the concept of complete spatial randomness is also often referred to as spatial Poisson process. As an example, for point pattern analysis, consider a study area which is subdivided into 100 quadrats and where 100 events were observed. Using the Poisson distribution, one can now predict the frequency distribution of quadrat counts that an independent random process should yield in the long run. The lambda value, which is needed to compute probabilities with the Poisson distribution, is in this case 1, which is obtained by dividing 100 events by 100 quadrats. This means that the average rate is one event per quadrat. Using the equation for the Poisson distribution, the expected proportion of quadrats with k events per cell can be computed for complete spatial randomness, which is shown in the rightmost column. The results indicate, for example, that the expected proportion of quadrats without events and that of quadrats with exactly one event is around 37%, which decreases to 18% for cells with two events and 6% for cells with three events. Note that values in this column are independent of any actually observed point pattern and solely based on predictions of the outcome of an independent random process. Next, we can use an observed point pattern, such as the generated random point pattern shown on the left. 
and compute an observed quadrat count distribution. For this one, start counting how many out of the 100 quadrats in the project area have zero events, which is 40 in this case. Therefore, the observed proportion for k equal to zero equals 40%, as shown in the first row under the observed proportion column. This step is repeated for all remaining k values. Next, one can compare the observed distribution of quadrat counts to that predicted by the Poisson distribution. The bar chart to the right plots the relative frequencies of the two distributions next to each other. As can be seen, the observed proportions are similar to those one would expect if the point pattern had been produced by an independent random process. As a next step, one could apply a statistical test to determine if the observed point pattern is a likely realization of an independent random process. Complete spatial randomness is mathematically elegant and forms a useful starting point for spatial analysis, but its use is often exceedingly naive and unrealistic. Most real-world spatial patterns suggest that some other process is operating. Events at one place and time are seldom independent of events at another, so we expect point patterns not to match a hypothesis of spatial randomness. There are two basic types of influences in which we expect real-world processes to differ from complete spatial randomness, which are called first and second order effect. The first order effect produces a variation in point density in response to some causal variable. For example, if events happen to be plants of a certain species, then plants of these species would probably cluster around on the favored soils at the expense of those less favored. The second order effect results from interaction between events whereby the occurrence of one event increases or suppresses the probability of another event nearby. An example includes the spread of contagious diseases such as foot and mouth disease in cattle, where the disease is passed from an initial carrier to other animals in close contact to the initial carrier. This slide illustrates how first and second order effects cause a point pattern to deviate from a random point pattern, which is shown in figure A. Clustering, as shown in figures B and D, can be the result of both first and second order effects. Competition of space or resources provides a familiar example of another form of second order effect, namely dispersion, which is depicted in figure C. For example, the presence of a shopping center in an area generally discourages other shopping centers from locating nearby. Both first and second order effects mean that the chances of an event occurring change over space. Therefore, the process generating these point patterns is non-stationary, as opposed to an independent random process. Complete spatial randomness is an ideal null process exhibiting no first or second order effects. The inhomogeneous Poisson process is a simple extension of the homogeneous Poisson process where intensity varies from place to place. Therefore, it introduces a first order effect. The figure to the left is the realization of a homogeneous Poisson process with an average rate of 100 events per unit square. The second and third figure illustrate realizations from processes that introduce spatial variation in lambda, as indicated by contour lines and arrows. Judging by eye, one can notice that these two realizations show a somewhat different point pattern compared to the homogeneous Poisson process. Second order effects involve introducing interactions of some kind between events. A process that introduces second-order effects is the Thomas process, also known as the Poisson clustering process. It involves the following steps. It starts with a simple Poisson process, which may also be inhomogeneous, to produce parent events. Each parent then produces a random number of children placed around the parent at random. The parent events are then removed to leave the final pattern. To specify this process, three parameters are required which are the intensity of the original distribution of the parents, denoted by lambda, the mean number of children of each parent, denoted by mu, and the characteristics of the dispersal of children from the parent locations, denoted by sigma. 
three realizations of this process with varying parameters are shown. At least, for the middle and right figure, the resultant patterns are distinguishable from a random point pattern when judged by eye. This slide summarizes the presentation. It started with an introduction to descriptive and inferential statistics and laid out the differences between deterministic and stochastic processes. Next, an independent random process was introduced as an ideal process that exhibits no first or second order effects and thus realizes complete spatial randomness. Finally, the presentation gave an introduction to alternative processes that introduce first or second order effects or both.